Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back for another video. Uh, just a little side note, when you have a dog that's super attached to you, this is how you have to film most of your intros uh, because he doesn't want to leave my side, even if it means sitting awkwardly on these steps here. Now in today's video, I'm actually on location back at my parents' house. And my plan is that I'm gonna make some upgrades to the stairwell behind me just to make it a little bit safer for my parents to get up and down uh, easier. Now, for some of you OG subscribers, you might remember that I put out a video when I first started this channel about how I transform these steps. Now, these stairs were actually covered in some really disgusting carpet, and I spent a lot of time taking that carpet off and sanding these treads down and painting them and putting finish on them and they look so much better than they did before. I'll see if I can find uh, a before picture so you guys can see what these stairs look like before. But as you can see, they look much better now, but there's one little problem with them and it's that they're not the safest to go up and down. Uh, and as my parents get older, I wanna make sure that these uh, steps are as safe as possible for them to get up and down. And there's two things that I'm gonna do to the stairway to make it a little bit safer for them. One is by adding a carpet runner down them uh, just to give them a little bit more grip walking down. Uh, and this polyurethane that I put on here, while it looks really nice, um, it does make them pretty slick to walk on, especially in like socks. So we're gonna add a carpet runner to these stairs and that's gonna improve uh, the safety of these. Now. It does make me a little bit sad to add carpet back to these stairs after I spent so much time taking carpet off of them, but I definitely think this is a necessary thing and the carpet is going to look much better than it looked uh, like before. So, and there's gonna be one other thing that I'm gonna do to the stairway to make it uh, a little bit safer and that's by adding a handrail on this wall here now there is actually a handrail on this side but it only goes up half of the staircase so once you get up to the top there is no handrail and actually i believe to code um, there should be a handrail that runs the entire length of the wall so that is something that i'm going to be adding um, that's going to come out in a separate video i'll show you how to do that but today's video is all about me installing the carpet runner on these stairs I'll show you everything that I did to do that, how long it took me, and by the end of the video, hopefully you'll be able to see if this is something you can tackle on your own. All right, let's get started on uh, making these steps a little bit safer. Let's go. All right, so I feel like this is a pretty beginner-friendly project, and what I mean by that is that it required minimal tools that a beginner-level DIY enthusiast might already own or could easily purchase or rent for this project. Now, the specific tools that I used for this project were as follows. A non-slip grip, mat, or rug pad. Now, for my installation, I chose to place a non-slip mat under the carpet because the carpet was already pretty thick and cushioned. But if you're wanting a more cushion option here, then you might want to consider installing a carpet pad under your carpet runner. And I'm not 100% sure that the non-slip mat that I used is completely necessary either, but I bought it with the hopes that it would keep the rug from sliding around any. However, with enough staples and some double-sided carpet tape, you could probably do without it. Speaking of double-sided carpet tape, I used about a roll and a half of this stuff. I also used a staple gun. Now, I have a battery-powered version here that I'll be using, but you could totally pick up a cord at one of these for a little bit cheaper, ranging somewhere between 30 and 60 bucks. I'm also going to be using some 3-8 inch staples to attach my runner to the stairs. I'll need a tape measure, some sort of straight edge for pressing the carpet into the seams, and a sharp utility knife or carpet shears for trimming the carpet to size. Now, there are also some optional tools you could use for an installation like this. One of those tools being a carpet stretcher. Now, I didn't use a carpet stretcher here, but if you want this runner to be as tight as possible, then you might consider renting or purchasing a carpet stretcher for this project. I felt like I was able to stretch it good enough on my own, but everyone has different standards, so it's something to consider before starting this type of project. And probably the most obvious thing that you will need is the actual carpet. I feel like I didn't even need to say that, but hey, I did. To figure out exactly how much carpet you will need for your stairs, what you'll want to do is measure the depth of your treads from the front to the back, 
and then take that measurement and multiply it by the number of treads there are. Then you will want to measure the height of your stair risers and do the same thing. Multiply it by the number of risers that you have. Then you will take those two numbers and add them together and that should give you the amount of material that you'll need. Now it's a good idea to add about 10% onto that to make sure you have enough. If you can't find a carpet runner you like that's long enough then you can always use two runners and join them together at a seam. The first step was installing the non-slip mat to the carpet treads. To do this, I put down a couple pieces of double-sided carpet tape on the treads and then place the non-slip mat on top of the tape. Now, if you've never used this type of tape before, well, let me inform you that it's incredibly sticky. Once you stick it somewhere, it's not coming off easily. So I made sure to measure my treads first to make sure the tape and the mats were going to be completely under the carpet when I placed them. They don't have to be perfect, but you definitely don't want them showing once the carpet is installed. So we just made a template of the correct size we needed for these mats and then cut one out for each stair tread and got them installed. Next we hauled the carpet runner up the stairs to get it roughly in place. I really shouldn't say we here because somehow I let my poor mother who's already had surgery once for a bad back do this step. And you know what 26 feet of carpet is not? Light. It's not light guys. Gosh, do better than me kids. Anyways, once the runner was roughly in place, we looked for something heavy to place up top on the excess carpet to prevent it from sliding down while I worked on getting it attached. Somehow the only thing heavy we could find at the time was a tote full of my mom's clothes which foreshadowing was not heavy enough, as you'll see. Again, do better than me. Maybe some weights or something would have worked better here. I decided to start from the bottom and work my way up. Now there are a couple different ways that you can attach the carpet at the bottom. You can run the carpet all the way to the floor and attach it or rather what I decided to do was tuck it under the nosing of the first tread and attach it from the underside. Now whichever step you start on whether it be the top or the bottom is the most important in my opinion because it will sort of guide how straight your carpet is going to be for the remainder of the stairs. Now to attach the carpet to the stairs, I pulled it as tight as I could get it and then I used a straight edge to kind of work it into the seams of the stairs. I would just work one section at a time, pulling it tight, then sinking some staples in. Now the majority of the staples that I attached were into the stair risers, but I did place a couple staples on the sides of the carpet into the treads just to help prevent it from lifting up and getting stuff under there or being a trip hazard. To make sure I was keeping my carpet centered as I went, I took a measurement from the right side wall of the stairs to where it met the right side of the runner on the first step. Then I cut some blocks to that exact measurement and I used those as my guides the entire way up to make sure that my rug stayed centered as I was attaching it. This ended up working out really well. The rug stayed centered and it saved me some time since I didn't have to measure each individual step. Now the nice thing about this type of project is that once you sort of figure out the system for how to do it, then it's just a matter of repeating those same steps. Yes, pun intended. I kept working my way up these stairs and as you can see my handling of the excess carpet up top was about to backfire on me big time. So that was fun. On second thought, maybe using weights up top isn't a good idea after all. That would have hurt even more. Anyways, once I had the laundry sorted, I continued working my way up the stairs. Now when it came to applying staples, let's just say I was not conservative. Which is kind of ironic because if I remember back to when I was removing carpet from these stairs originally. Boy did I complain about the amount of staples that were used and I had to remove. I mean my fingers ached for days from removing staples. My how the tables have turned. But hopefully that'll be someone else's problem and I won't be the one having to remove all the staples again. But if there shall be someone one day that has to remove these staples, well let me just say I'm sorry. I can relate and I feel your pain. Using a good amount of staples helped me get the carpet good and stretched out so it laid flat and it wasn't a trip hazard. Luckily the staples are pretty much invisible once they're set in place so you wouldn't even know they're there. Well you would but only because I just told you. And you've watched me put about a thousand staples in so far but anyways. 
Once I got to the top of the steps, I had to figure out how I wanted to trim the carpet to size. Now I could have wrapped it over the top step and cut it and applied some sort of transition piece, but I thought that would look UGLY and I didn't want it to be something you could trip on. So I decided to trim the carpet right under the nosing of the top tread with a really sharp utility knife. Now I say really sharp because if you've ever tried to cut carpet before, well then you will know it does not cut easy. So I used a sharp knife to score it several times until it cut all the way through. Once I had it cut, I delicately removed the cove molding that was underneath the top step nosing and tucked the carpet behind it. Now I did have to add a few shims to the back side of this molding so that when I attached it, it would sit flush. Really, it's kind of up to you how you want to trim your carpet to size for your top or bottom step depending on where you start, but I wanted to explain how I did it. And with that, this carpet install is officially complete. Now, I've got to admit that I was a little bit biased at the beginning of this project because I had worked so hard on removing carpet off these steps that I wasn't sure adding carpet back was going to look good. But I know it was a necessary step to make them a little bit safer. And I've got to say that I actually like the look of it with the carpet runner in place as well. I think having this installed is going to make a big difference when it comes to the safety of these steps. Alright guys, that's everything that I did to install this carpet runner on these steps behind me. Now if this is sort of something that you've been debating about whether this is a project you want to tackle on your own, then I hope this video inspired you to just go for it. I mean, I feel like this was a pretty simple project. It required minimal tools and it probably only took me about two hours from start to finish. So I definitely feel like it's something that even your beginner level DIYer could tackle on their own. And like I said, I hope this video inspired you to do just that. I also hope you guys learned some things along the way. If you did, feel free to like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the next video that I'm gonna be putting out is gonna be all about installing this handrail here and that's just gonna help improve the safety of these steps for my parents. So if you're interested in how I installed this handrail, then make sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on my next video. So with that said, I'll be seeing you guys again very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.